Hi, I'm Matthew Cavalier and welcome back to my channel, Moments with Matthew. As you can see, we're back in our regular filming location, so I'm back from my travels and it's time to really get some filming done. I've missed my home, but I really did enjoy my adventures that I went on. And I hoped you enjoyed exploring some of those places with me. I also hope you were able to watch and enjoy my new segment, A Mini Moment. So now on Wednesdays and Fridays, you'll be able to enjoy a moment and a mini moment with Matthew. And as always, before we get started, if you're really enjoying these moments with Matthew, please make sure to subscribe and like and share and absolutely comment down below because I have really enjoyed reading your comments lately and I've been trying to respond to absolutely everyone who comments. So thank you so much for the comments. Thank you so much for sharing and thank you so much for the subscribers I already have. I am truly grateful that you are joining me on this adventure with me. And of course, don't forget to connect with me down below on my socials so we can continue the conversation there. Today I want to talk a little bit about probably one of the most scary yet powerful emotions in our language, and that's love. You know, so many people are looking for love, they want love, but they're afraid to be vulnerable to love. And a lot of the times, love or I love you or just any kind of expression of love sends up red flags to people and it scares them off. I'll admit, especially in my dating life, when someone has said I loved you before I was ready for them to say it or I thought we were in a place, then that sent up red flags and I would slowly diminish the relationship and cut that off. And now, as I think to myself and have explored more, I think what a crazy thought that is because I was turning away an expression of love. Perhaps that expression of love didn't come in the form that I expected or at a time that I expected it, but turning it away was definitely a negative aspect in my life because I now want to be open to love. I want to be open to all forms of love. Spiritual masters say that we should embrace love and open our hearts to love, both giving and receiving. And yet it's one of the scariest things that we have to do because we have to be vulnerable. We have to be vulnerable with our heart. We have to be vulnerable with our emotions. We have to be vulnerable and allow that other person into our lives and to be able to say, please don't hurt me. But remember, love is not about pain. Love is not about hurt. Love is pure. Love is exactly as we see it. All of the other stuff, all of the other nonsense, all of the pain and the heartache and the expectations and the disappointments and the anger that we associate with love are human made. Love is pure. Love is open. Love is accepting and love is welcoming. It's all the other stuff that we do that gets in the way of love. So we don't want to be afraid of love. And I know that love can be scary. When a partner says to us, when we're not ready, I love you, that sometimes puts a, a wall up immediately where we say, you love me? How? We've only known each other for this amount of time. Or you don't know everything about me. Or I don't know that I love you yet and we get scared and we push back and we cut them out of our lives. If they are ready to say, I love you, that's okay. Open your heart and let them love you. And it is okay to say to them, I care about you, but I'm not where you are yet. The communication is the key in those situations. It doesn't mean that you have to cut things out you have to be open and committed to having a thoughtful, genuine conversation with them and say, I'm not there yet, but I am enjoying what we are experiencing together. I am loving getting to know you. And I want to be there with you soon. There's nothing wrong with that. 
But shutting them out because they have been vulnerable to you only continues the vicious cycle of our fear of love. But here's the beautiful thing. Love and fear have a very hard time living in the same place. One will always outdo the other. My hope is that the love will outdo the fear for you. Growing up, the only people I was comfortable ever saying I love you to were my family. For the longest time, I wouldn't even tell friends that I loved them. And only when I had reached my expectation of what love should be and the right time frame for it, would I tell a partner that I love them as well. I was scared. I didn't want to be vulnerable. But now that I've studied and I've worked on myself and I've worked on self-growth, does love scare me sometimes? Absolutely, because it can hit us with a force that we're not prepared for. But I am so much more open now telling friends, family, partner that I love you. And that is so important. We have to be willing to be vulnerable or we can never truly accept love into our hearts from either other people or even better, from ourselves. Some of our fear of love does come from deep-seated places, whether it goes back to our childhood or broken relationships where love was used as a weapon. Love itself is not a weapon. Love is pure. Love is kind and gentle. We use it as a weapon. Whether it's from a toxic relationship or unloving parents or family members, we have to deal with that baggage we have been carrying around on our hearts before we can open our hearts to the vulnerability of love in the next chapters of our life. Without dealing with it first, we are not going to be able to move on and open ourselves up to the joy that is love. Love from family members, friends, partners, lovers, whoever you want to experience love from. But most importantly, we have to experience that love in ourselves. Love is often weaponized through guilt and anger. Sometimes when we're angry and the person we are angry with tells us that they love us, we may not return that love because we're too angry. That's weaponizing love. Or when you guilt someone into staying in a relationship with you or guilt someone into doing something for you. If you loved me, you'd do this. That is weaponizing love. Love is not a weapon. Don't use it as such because not only does it teach the person you're using it against, but it teaches you that love is not pure, that love is what causes heartache and pain. And if they don't live up to your expectations of love, it has failed you. Remember, as I said earlier, love does not weaponize, love does not set expectations. It is humanity that does that and gets in the way of love's true mission. So what message am I trying to bring here to you? I've gone over a lot of stuff. The vulnerability that it takes to love and be loved, weaponizing love, fear of love, but ultimately the message is love can break through every single one of those barriers that you are most afraid of. Love does conquer fear, but you have to be willing to let it. Can you open up your heart? For me, it took so many different authors, therapists, time in meditation, all of that to help me understand that not only do I deserve love, but love comes at me in many forms. For the longest time, I thought love only meant romantic love. And don't get me wrong, I love romantic love, I want romantic love, but that is not the only love in my life. I have the love of family. I have the love of my friends. I even have the love of my dogs, and sometimes I don't know why they love me. But I have all of those aspects of love. 
and you need to recognize all of the ways that you are loved in this world. It may not be direct. Someone may not come out and say, I love you, but look at their actions. Look at how you treat each other. Those are little moments. Just like I talked about in my gratitude uh, mini moment this past week, find those little moments of love and hold on to them and reflect on them. Because when you feel you're most unlovable, that's when you have to stop and say, wait a minute, I am loved. I saw love in this moment, and I saw love in this moment. And gather those moments to you, and keep them close to you, and remember them. Because those are the times that you're going to be able to look and say, wait a minute, love does touch my life. Love does open my heart. And the more we recognize its presence in our life, the more we will be able to take it in and then give it back out to others. Those that we care about, those that are less fortunate, those that are yearning for love that we can give to them. When we recognize the love in our life, that is when we can shine it out and be a positive beacon of joy in this world. And that's what we need now more than ever. So the more love you can take in, the more love you can give out, and that is such a great thing for this world. That is what we need right now. And that is what I want to share with you so that we can go out together and spread love. Now that we've talked about spreading love, let's talk about spreading this message. Please make sure to subscribe and like and share and comment down below. Are you afraid of love? Are you afraid of vulnerability? Are you open to love? Share with me in the comments below and I'll make sure to respond to you. And don't forget, again, check the socials down below, connect with me there, and let's keep this love conversation going. I'll see you on Friday for our mini moment. And thank you again for joining me. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for supporting. I'll see you next time on Moments with Matthew.